and I am in I'm in Minecraft creative mode. I'm in Minecraft creative mode. Like, oh my god. I don't do edibles anymore because they're a little too close to death for me. Y'all y'all are tripping. Y'all are tweaking. I I'm fine. It does not affect me. I was on one. He would take me to senior parties as, as a sophomore. 15-year-old girl going to senior parties. Prison. Prison. I really fell for the love bombing. I really loved it. I loved every minute of it. I ate, I ate that up. What can I say? I'm only a girl in the world. And I lost my virginity to him. I lost my virginity to a diagnosed sociopath while on shrooms for the first time. Like, no wonder I'm so f***ed up. <laughs> okay, I have a pretty funny first edible story. And... We're taking it back to when I was 15, okay? So I was at my friend Fiona's house, and she's a freaking model now, and she's like six foot two, three or something, and she's beautiful, and I love her and miss her, and she's freaking awesome. And I'll go over to her house, and we had this friend. I'm gonna name her Nicole. Yeah, Nicole, okay. Nicole's dad had cancer was like getting over cancer he so he had a like medical marijuana prescription and would get really strong edibles really strong weed and nicole brought some over and they were in the form of chocolates now it was new year's eve night and i was spending it with fiona and nicole we were eating popcorn we were eating chocolate like regular chocolate i didn't even know what edibles were really we were just eating a bunch of snacks hanging out in a room anyways they go in the kitchen to make popcorn a big bowl of it and I'm in there and I find this chocolate that's covered in gold tin foil. And I'm like, whoa, what's this? I open it. I eat the whole thing. You know, it's just like bar of chocolate. I eat the whole thing. And they come in. And they're like looking around for something. And they go, hey, Megan, like, have you seen this chocolate with gold on it? I'm like, oh, yeah, I ate it. And they're like, you did what? You did what? And I'm like super innocent. Honestly, I was that friend that would act dumb, dumber than I was to like make people laugh. Which I don't know if that's a, like a redeeming quality. I would really act dumb, but I would make people laugh and it would make me feel good. They were like panicking and I was like, what? Like what? Like, is it expired? Like what? They're like, that was, that had weed in it. Like that had tree in it. Like that was an edible. And I'm like, like I feel fine. Like I bet I'm immune to it. I bet I'm I bet I'm immune. Um I wasn't immune. An hour later I'm still like I don't feel anything. Like I'm immune to it. Like I'm fine, guys. Like this is going to be a normal New Year's Eve. Midnight is in like 30 minutes. I'm fine. 30 more minutes past midnight hits. I'm still fine. I'm like, guys, y'all y'all are tripping. Y'all are tweaking. I I'm fine. Weed does not affect me. 10 minutes later, after I said that, oh, oh my god, it hits me like a, like a, like a Tesla Pepsi semi-truck. I start giggling the most I've ever giggled in my little life. Tears are streaming down my face, and I'm laughing so hard, I'm having such a good time, and it's kind of like, I'm like dizzy in a way, like everything's like, whoa, like it felt like. I was like a lotus flower in like Percy Jackson. I was on one and i had the best time ever i was laughing i was getting on the table and like they were laughing like with me they were like we're gonna call the sociopath guy mark no i hate that we're gonna call him matt no we're gonna call him john so john he's like blowing up my phone and they're like making your phones going off and i'm like i'm i'm on another planet I'm, I'm not even in this galaxy. I'm, I'm not even a human anymore. I'm an alien. And they're like, John keeps blowing up your phone. I'm 15. John's either 17 and a half or 18. He's a senior. I'm a sophomore. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, why is John calling me? We had just started hanging out a bunch. He wanted to like walk to Fiona's house to see me and like to hang out. And I think like the girls knew how much I liked him and stuff. So they were like hyping me up you know, like, go do it, but I was so high, like, I should not have g gone anywhere, right, and so I think they text him back for me, and they're like, yeah, like, walk over here, and he happened to be at a friend's house really close to Fiona's house, so he walks over in, like, a blanket stuff, calls me, and he's like, I'm outside, I'm 
tweaking and Fiona has the phone and, and they're like he's outside like ha -ha. And then I was like no like guys I cannot go like I was like I was like no, no guys, guys I cannot, I cannot go on. like like tweaking and he's outside and they push me out of the door and lock the door and I am in I'm in Minecraft creative mode I'm in Minecraft creative mode like oh my god he was like okay do you want to walk to the park and it's like one in the morning it's like two or maybe even two in the morning we're on the sidewalk we start walking and I'm, I'm trying to act super normal because like i really liked him like really really liked him like he's one of the most popular guys in the f school and i'm was stupid young and impressionable and vulnerable i was like okay we start walking to the park we take two steps and i and i stand there i stand there for like what feels like two hours i thought we were standing there for two hours and I go, oh my god, we've been standing here for a long time. Like, it's been two hours. He goes, Megan, it's been two minutes. I literally had to tell him I had to go back and I could not hang out. So, I don't do edibles anymore because they're a little too close to death for me. I forgot my book. I'm reading a book right now. I actually forget what it's called, but it's about sociopaths and I'm halfway through it. I have like an obsession with sociopaths because for a really long time I would attract them. If you're vulnerable, like someone can tell when if you're vulnerable, like if you're too nice, you're gonna get walked on. If, if you're in a vulnerable place in your mind and in your life, people can tell and people will take advantage of you if like they're like that. A lot of people are like that. Sociopaths are very attracted to people who are vulnerable. And I was vulnerable in my life for a really long time. They were all like, Oh, this girl's vulnerable and and sad. I'm going to corrupt her. I've always attracted crazy sociopath people, but not in the past like year. Progress. I don't know how I do it. I think like I used to be addicted to like Bumble and dating apps for like the validation aspect. So I was really lonely, especially when I was living in my car. I would end up like matching with sociopaths, right? I match with a lot of people. G generally, girls get a lot more matches than guys. That's just a thing. I think girls are more picky on dating apps. I'd match with like, you know, a certain number of people on dating apps. And then I'd te be texting like a lot of people at the same time. And I, I would like start only replying to the people who were love bombing me. Like all the guys who were love bombing the f out of me, I was, Duh, like, of course you're in love with me, like, of course you're telling me you want to fly me to New York. Honestly, my fault. I really fell for the love bombing. I really loved it. I loved every minute of it. I ate, I ate that up. What can I say? I'm only a girl in the world. And a lot of them, like, told me they were sociopaths. And, like, I would get a very, really dark energy from them. And then I, like, we'd, like, smoke weed together and I'd get an even darker vibe. Because I feel like if I smoke tree... I can like really pick up on people's vibes like I think I can anyways I'm super sensitive to people I'll get like a really dark energy from them and then I'll start asking them specific questions and I like this one time I was smoking with this guy and he basically said that he doesn't have empathy for humans but he does for animals and then I started asking him more questions and then he admitted that he's a sociopath and that happened to me like multiple times and I'm like why does this keep happening to me? Like, there's something wrong with me to where I'm attracting sociopaths. Like, uh, there's something wrong here. I mean, there's something wrong there, too. Like, they need to figure that out, but... Antisocial personality disorder is actually very, very real. And that's what sociopath um, is. And you're not born with it like psychopaths they're born being a psychopath but with sociopaths they're like oh oh i got beat and i have trauma and that turns into the part of your brain that has empathy i, I watched a whole bunch of sociopath documentaries like a couple years ago because i was like i need to figure out why i'm attracting this type of person and i, I think i think another big thing about it was like the first guy I was like in love with was a sociopath and he was a couple years older than me and like corrupted me from a very young age 
kind of had me on string for three years until some really bad stuff happened. And I lost my virginity to him. I lost my virginity to a diagnosed sociopath while on shrooms for the first time. Like, no wonder I'm so fucked up. Like, <laughs> My idea of love, my perception of sex was so skewed. Oh my god, this man was- this man was a the worst. Everyone in my hometown knows who he is. If there's anyone from my hometown watching this, they probably know. The whole school knows who, who this man is. This man was like a couple years older than me. Everyone knew him as like life of the party. And he would corrupt all the younger kids. He would take me to senior parties as, as a sophomore. Now, 15-year-old girl going to senior parties. Prison. Prison. But I can't even lie. Like, when I was at that age, I literally was walking to those senior parties. And I'm like, I'm the shit. Like, I'm the only sophomore here. Like, I'm the shit. Girl, no. Go home. You're in dangerous territory. You're not where you're supposed to be. And you're gonna get essayed. Like, go home. Some of them were fun. And it was, like, very thrilling and exciting. Like, I always wanted to get out of my house. Like, I would do anything to get away from my mom. Because she was just... Raw! Blackout drunk all the time. Trying to fight me. <laughs> and I didn't want to be home. So he was super, like, one of the most popular seniors was known for corrupting, like, younger people, like, freshmen, sophomores, and, like, taking them out to parties, and he, like, even really liked the smart kids, like, the nerdy guys, like, he'd hang out with, who, like, did cross-country and stuff, um, which they're all really cool guys, but you could just tell, like, he liked taking innocence away from people, and that's what I was to him. I was, like, the epitome of innocence like I was a virgin I was 15 like you know and I don't know it's just uh, that's a whole thing I'm literally writing I'm writing a whole book about it I'm writing a full novel about like my experience being in a relationship three year relationship with a sociopath and like how it me up sideways I even I talk about that in therapy more than my parents which is like crazy. I'm really like so glad I'm not hanging out with the people I used to hang out with. They were not not good people. Like I was really sacrificing my boundaries because I was lonely. And so then I was I was having these friends that didn't care about me, didn't care about themselves, just wanted to drink alcohol and do drugs and it really sent me into a really bad spiral for like a year. I finally got out of it and I've honestly never felt better. And I live in a cabin in the woods and it's just, it's very nice being isolated and secluded and away from all that. And you just wake up one day and you're like, we've all been drinking for like six months straight. Um, maybe we should stop, maybe we should get help. And b before I joined that friend group, like they've been getting drunk for like three years. Like, they don't care. They just, they just want to get high and, like, I was getting so fucking depressed to the point where I didn't want to be around anyone. I would just stay in, like, one room by myself. And I was, like, living in this house where, like, all, like, a bunch of the friends lived. Like, it was a fucking dirty frat house. It was a trap house. And it just, it was really, honestly, the lowest point in my life. It was it was awful. Like I I never want to go back there again. I never want to see those people again, and it sucked. Like having to, you know, cut them off because like it can be so fun. But then you have that like ninety percent of the time it's awful, and yeah, y'all y'all are starting to drink in the morning when you wake up, and and days start blurring together, and you're getting in trouble, you're doing things you shouldn't be doing, you're you're in a car where someone's drinking and driving, you're you're doing things you shouldn't be doing that you're not proud of, and, I, like, I remember I'd, I'd go in the bathroom and look in the mirror and be like, F I don't look good, this doesn't look good, like, I need to change, and, you know, I decided to, so I don't really drink anymore unless it's, like, on occasion, because I, I have the addictive gene, in my family and I'm very aware of that. I just try to stay away from like 
bad stuff like kratom like i won't do kratom because even though it will help you like it can help people get off heroin like it's really great in that way it's very addictive so like i know what not to do and what to do and i still over drink sometimes like on occasion i can still like over drink because i have that issue but i just you know now i drink like once every three months or like once every two months or on occasion